And welcome to our last lesson in 3.5, trinomial factoring with a common factor. So we looked at FOIL, multiplying two binomials, and we looked at how to factor a trinomial. But those trinomials we were factoring were rather easy, rather simple. Now we're going to look at what happens if our trinomial has a common factor. So we've looked at common factoring in a previous lesson. We're going to combine that now with the idea of trinomial factoring. In trinomial factoring, our trinomial, each term will have a common factor that we have to remove. After we remove the common factor, then we're going to have to do trinomial factoring on it. And of course, that will give us our two binomials. So let's look at our first example here. Factor the following trinomial, 3a squared minus 6a minus 24. So the first thing we do is we factor this guy. So I write out each term, 3a squared. Now again, when we're getting a common factor, we don't need to worry about that negative sign. So I'll have 6a, and I'll have 24. So what's common to all three? Let's factor the 3, 1 and 3, and then we've got a and a. We've got 1 and 6, 2 and 3, and a single a. Now on 24, we've got 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. Ran out of room there, so I'll just put the 4 and the 6 down there. So what's common to each list? Well, it looks like we got a 3. So my 3 is my common factor. Let's pull it out. So I take my 3, and I divide each term by 3, which leaves me with a squared. Now this is negative 6 divided by 3, gives me negative 2, a, and then negative 24 divided by 3 gives me negative 8. So now I've got a trinomial that I can actually factor. So let's go and factor it. This 3 has to come al along for the ride. A lot of students will forget about this 3. They'll just simply open up their two sets of brackets and get the two binomials. But we have to remember there's a 3 in front of there. So I take the number of negative 8 and I'm going to factor it. So how do I get to two numbers and multiply to give me negative 8? 1 and negative 8. 2 and negative 4. 3 doesn't go, and we're back to 4. Now I've also got my negatives, my opposites. Negative 1 and positive 8. Negative 2 and positive 4. So which one of these will add together to give me negative 2? Well, the answer is 2 and negative 4. I take my a squared and I put an a, put an a, positive 2 and negative 4. So my original trinomial was 3a squared minus 6a minus 24. When I factored I get a 3 and then a plus 2 and a minus 4. Now of course we have this same check we could try. If I take all this and multiply it through I should end up with my original trinomial. So I'm going to get my binomials combined first. So I'm going to go with 3, and then I'm going to get a times a, which is a squared, 2a, positive 2a, negative 4a, minus 8. Combine that, so I get a squared 
minus 2a minus 8. And then, of course, when I times that by 3, I'm going to get 3a squared minus 6a minus 24, which, again, is my original question. So it looks like I did this one correctly. Let's flip the page and go on to example number two. Factor the following trinomial, negative 4t to the third plus 28t squared minus 48t. Now a question you might have is how do I know if I have to do regular factoring or if I have to do a common factor first? Well you'll notice that we really don't like a constant in front of my first term. So that's kind of a trick or a key that tells me I have to factor. The other thing is that we always factor the first term as squared. In this case it's cubed. So again I don't really want to do a cubed factoring here. So the fact that it's got a coefficient and it's not squared means I'm probably doing common factoring. So let's write out my factors, my terms, sorry. Now it's negative 4t, but I'm just going to go 4t to the third, 28t squared, and then 48t. So for number 4, it is 1 and 4, and then 2, 2 times 2. But I do have three t's. One, two, three. For 28, it's 1 and 28. 2 and 14. 3 does not go, so 3 doesn't go, but we do have a 4 and a 7. And then 5 and 6 doesn't go into 28. But I do have two t's. And now we do 48. I get 1 and 48. I get 2 and 24. I get 3 and 18. I get 4 and 12. 6 and 8. And I've got a single t. So what's common here? Well, I've got a 4 and I've got 1 t. So I'm going to pull out 4 t. Here's a little trick. Notice how I had a negative sign there. I really want that t term, that first t squared term, to be positive. So I'm actually going to pull out a negative 4t here. So when you do have a negative, you don't use it when you get your factors. But when you find your common factor, you got to make it negative. So when I pull out a negative 4t, I'm going to get t squared. Positive 28 divided by negative 4 gives me negative 7 and then I've got a t. And negative 48 divided by negative 4 is positive 12. And the t's will disappear. So I can close my brackets. So now we've got our trinomial in factorable form. Let's open up our brackets. I've got negative 4t bracket, 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 bracket. Let's take that 12 and factor it. That's our constant. I've got 1 and 12. I've also got negative 1 and negative 12. Gives me positive 12. I got 2 and 6. My negatives. Negative 2, negative 6. I've got 3 and 4. And my negatives. Negative 3, negative 4. 
So the question now is, which two numbers will multiply to positive 12 but add to negative 7? Well, we might think it's 3 and 4 right away. 3 and 4, they do multiply to give you 12, but they add to give you positive 7, so that's not what we're looking for. So our answer is actually negative 3 and negative 4. So I'll put the negative, I'll split my t. I'll put the negative 3 in the first, negative 4 in the last, and there's my answer. Negative 4t times t minus 3 times t minus 4. Okay, let's go to our textbook. And again, we're still in 3.5, so I'm going to give you specific questions to work on. Let's go to page 166, questions 15, 17, and 21. And then you can choose any two more that you want, practicing any of the three skills we've learned.